Welcome to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we love hearing from you. If you have questions, comments, success stories you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on The Bright Side. We'll get your calls in our next segment. We'll be talking to Christy Whitman author of a new book called The Desire Factor. She's also got several other books, The Art of Having It All and Taming Your Alpha Bitch. Christy has appeared, I think I can say that on, on the radio. Christy's appeared on the news, uh, on uh, the Today Show, on the Morning Show, on the Hallmark Channel. She's got a great TEDx video about being unlimited. She's a super inspirational speaker, and we'll talk to Christy in our, uh, at the bottom of the hour, we'll get your calls in our next segment. I am just all about inspiration these days. And as much as I think uh, taking care of yourself from a nutritional standpoint, using nutritional supplements, exercising, dietary strategy, strategies are important for good health. There's nothing that trumps the psychological aspect of our being when it comes to being healthy and being well and improving the quality of our life. I was just reading an article this morning from the British Medical Journal, Trends in Suicide During the COVID-19 Epidemic. Quote, as many countries face new stay-at-home restrictions to curb the spread of COVID-19, there are concerns that rates of suicide may increase or have already increased. Several factors underpin these concerns, including a deterioration in population uh, in the population's mental health, a higher prevalence of reported thoughts and behaviors of self-harm among people with COVID-19 problems, accessing mental health service, services, and evidence suggesting that previous epidemics are associated with a rise in deaths by suicide. And this article goes on to say that preventive act, preventative action must be taken. And that's really, to me, that's, we have an opportunity here. Yes, craziness is going on in the world, as many of us can personally attest to. Leaving aside the dubious nature of what we're hearing from standard information providers on the news and in the media and from health authorities and government, what is clearly beyond doubt is the fact that people, perhaps present company excluded, but the masses of people are freaking out. Mental illness is up, alcoholism is up, unfortunately suicides. What is obvious is the fact that many of us are not handling this current situation as well as we can from a psychological perspective. So whether or not the physical nature of what we're being told is, hap is happening is really happening, and I have my doubts, the psychological impact of what is supposedly happening is beyond doubt, which is actually a good thing because while the physical nature of being controlled by shutdowns, lockdowns, and uh, job losses, and business closures, and financial and economic, the financial and economic impact of what's happening, maybe the viral infections, maybe all of this stuff is inevitable and beyond our control, but from a psychological aspect, we have control. We can be psychologically strong in a world of uncertainty, which in a way from a moment-to-moment -moment perspective, is not really any more uncertain than it always is. The world is always uncertain. We always live in uncertainty, and, and the way uncertainty is showing up in the year 2020 or has shown up as the year winds down or will show up in the year 2021 is more of the same. We always live in this uncertainty, and learning to live with uncertainty is probably the single most important thing we should be focusing on, we should be paying attention to, we should be concentrating on. Think about how liberated we would be if we all would be okay with what's not knowing what's coming up. Even better, what if we could be okay with whatever it is that shows up? What if we could be okay with not knowing what's going to show up? What if we could be okay with whatever it is that shows up? I'm not saying that that's going to be easy, but it is certainly something to strive for. How much of our time is spent just coping with being alive? We could be okay with the inevitable uncertainty or the inevitable crap, physicists call it entropy, that happens. Entropy happens, as the bumper sticker says. This is what religion gives us when it's at its best. This is what it gives us. It gives us a sense of certainty. It gives us a sense of hope. It's why really smart people who are too intelligent to believe in woo-woo or in God or in uh, what they can't see with their eyes or understand with their brains are some of the most miserable people you'll ever meet. This is why Jesus says in the book of Matthew, you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. I was listening to an interview with Steve Colbert, the comedian, uh, the Daily Show guy. I think it's the Daily Show, some show on TV. I don't even know. I don't really watch TV, but Steve Colbert, I know he's a comedian. He's got a night show and he talks. Uh, I was listening to him in an interview where he talks about uh, telling jokes that no one laughs at, bombing. 
comedians call it a bomb. He says in the interview that the best advice he was ever given when he started his career was to learn to love the bomb. He said, it's not about surviving when the joke doesn't go well, or maybe we'll get him next time, but rather it's about breathing in. This is literally what he says in the interview. It's about breathing in and actually loving the bomb, loving that moment of failure. Not that that's easy, but that has to be our job. That has to be what we have to strive for, loving the inevitable crap that's going to show up in our life. Not that that's easy, but somehow appreciating it for what it's worth. And yes, it may sound trite, it may sound cliche, but it's a way to have a powerful life. It's just as important as vitamin C. It's just as important as Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It's just as important as exercise. Yes, we have to strengthen our immune system with breathing and eating correctly and supplementing and working out. But equally important is... And you're not going to get this from the medical model, by the way. You're not going to get this from the talking head spokespeople on TV or part of the government or part of the media, uh, supposedly uh, authorities on how we take care of ourselves. But it's equally important as anything you're going to hear from the medical model or from me in terms of nutrition is that we have to be psychologically strong. And this crisis that's going on in the world today is an opportunity to exercise our psychological muscles. Read self-help books. Every day, read self-help books. There, uh, Christy Whitman's uh, uh, TEDx talk on un being unlimited is should be, if you're feeling any stress, that should be required listening or required watching her TEDx talk on being unlimited. Christy Whitman, Google it. And we'll talk to her about it later today uh, in, in our in the, uh, at the bottom of the hour. Communicate with like-minded people. Communicate with positive people. Spend time with positive people. Don't watch the news. Don't watch the news. There's nothing important you need to hear on the news. Maybe the local news for the weather, but certainly not politics and how many people have died and how many people are hospitalized and what the latest lockdown and shutdown and, uh, and uh, Trumpian or Biden thing that's going on in the world. It doesn't help us. It doesn't serve us. We have to learn to control our minds, to control the information that goes into our minds, just like we control the food that goes into our body. And we can treat what's going on in the world today as an opportunity to become mentally and psychologically and emotionally and spiritually strong and powerful. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls next segment, Christy Whitman. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to Christy Whitman about being unlimited. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. Christy Whitman, the author of a new book, The Desire, Fa the Desire Factor, and uh, also The Art of Having It All and Taming Your Alpha Bitch will be with us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about limitation and living an unlimited life with Christy Whitman. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in just a moment. So uh, we've been talking about fat burning. Actually, we've been talking about choline and, and fat metabolism, but really these things are fat burners. If you get a fat burning supplement or a fat absorption supplement uh, or a fat metabolism supplement, something, a uh, supplement from the health food store that helps your body deal with fats, you'll probably find choline in it. You'll probably find methionine in it. You'll probably find betaine in it. You may even find niacin in it because niacin has got some interesting fat burning properties. And all of these are not just good for fat burning. They're not just good for fat absorption, uh, fat malabsorption issues for helping you deal with fats. They're also important for the prevention of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease affects 100 million Americans. I've always been fascinated with the term non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The reason they call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is to distinguish it from alcoholic fatty liver disease, which means that 100 million Americans are dealing with liver problems that you used to have to be an alcoholic to have. Nowadays, one out of three of us has it just because of the way we eat, just because of our supplementation or lack of supplementation. 
and uh, also the toxicity that we put into our bodies. And that doesn't, in, that includes toxicity in unintentional toxicity. And it actually includes intentional toxicity because prescription drugs will lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because the liver is stressed out by prescription drugs. Maybe not one prescription drug, but if you're taking two or three or five or 10, and some people are taking 15 of them, the odds are pretty good. You're going to be messing up your liver. And if you're drinking alcohol on top of that, <laughs> you're almost certainly going to have uh, fatty liver disease. And if you're deficient in choline, it's going to make it even worse. So if you want to protect your liver and you want to help your body deal with fats, if you have any fat malabsorption problems, make sure you're taking choline or eating choline-containing foods, eggs, legumes, uh, organ meats. Make sure you're using betaine. You get betaine HCL in your ultimate enzymes. And uh, it's probably a good idea to start using some methylating agents. And we're, we're going to be talking about this whole process of methylation, uh, especially as it regards something called an MTHFR deficiency. I know a lot of you guys have heard about MTHFR deficiencies. They're kind of a, a big deal, although they're totally misunderstood. They're, they're not really a big deal, but they're made into a big deal, MTHFR deficiencies. And there's very simple strategies that you can use to deal with an MTHFR deficiency if you've been told that you have one. We will uh, talk about that on our next Bright Side episode. We'll continue talking about methylation and supplementing for fat malabsorption and for fatty liver disease uh, in the coming Bright Side, on the coming Bright Side, epi- on coming Bright Side episodes. Time to hit the phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to, let's go to Lee in New Jersey. Lee, what's up, man? You never call me. Pharmacist Ben, how are you? What, what a pleasure to talk to you. On the radio. Uh, we talk, you and I talk a lot. Been, yes. yes, I've been trying to get on the radio to talk to you for a while, uh, just in front of your listeners, because to um, express such a profound amount of gratitude for everything you do. Thank you. Uh, day in and day out. It, 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 it's like the, when I think about, when I think about how, the first time I, you know, I heard your, your philosophy and I heard your strategies and just your, your personality and your 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 selfless way, I um, I was I was struck and and now I not only healed myself but I have the ability to heal help other people heal themselves. That's awesome, Lee. Is, it's a complete 180 degrees from where I was, and it's, uh, I'll just say quickly: in 2015, um, I was I was fraught with diseases. Both, uh, you know, physically and 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 some emotional, mental, and uh, I was at my wit's end. But but something I learned from Tony Robbins was that questions are the answers. Sometimes, mm, always, I love questions it. are the answers. Love that. So I kept asking, what what can I do? I kept asking, and I also adopted the belief that God puts the cure or the medicine, so to speak, in the world before the ailment. That's so with awesome. those two, with those two, with that belief and that strategy of questions for the answer, I kept digging and I kept digging, and eventually I healed all my digestive ailments and and uh, and any emotional problems that I had. And now I'm, I'm people come to me to ask me for wow que- for help. You're, so you're I, an inspiration. I, I thank you. You're an inspiration. You inspire me. That's awesome. I love what you just said about how you adopted the belief. Most people don't adopt beliefs. They have beliefs or beliefs are given to them or implanted or injected into them. But you actually motivated to adopt a belief, to actually do it proactively. What? Say again? That's the power of desperation. Uh Uh-huh. I got it. I got it. Sometimes you have to hit bottom, right? When you've been been, uh, toyed with by the medical model for so long, and you, you don't see results. I, my, like I said, my sister has Crohn's disease. They took out her ilium. And mm. if, I, if I had the information then that I had now, I, I think maybe she could have saved the organ. But, that, you know, that's, that's in the past. But I, I just uh, I don't want that to happen to anyone ever again because it doesn't have to. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lee. You inspired me. I'm sure you inspired other people, too. And that's the best thing we yeah. can do with our lives is we can be inspirational for other people. Thank you so much, Lee. Have a beautiful day, buddy. Thank I'm glad you, you called. Take, you take care, my man. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, that's super cool. That's the best thing and the most important thing we could do is be inspirational to others. As we inspire others, we'll inspire ourselves. And don't forget, inspiration means in spirit. You're putting spirit inside other people. 
and you're putting spirit inside yourself. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate that very much. Truth Raider, what's going on, man? Good morning, sir. Well, unfortunately, it's the opposite for me. Uh-oh. I do my best all the time to promote. I do my best all the time to promote you and your the program, the true treatment system, the longevity products. It's right there. You can correct things. It's easy. All you have to do, all of us, take some of this, add this, slowly bring it into your life, and. I guess I'm putting pearls before swine because it, it, it unfortunately it doesn't happen to me. I mean, I can't sell a dollar for 50 cents, but I uh, do my best. You, I always. Do you find yourself, you're getting better as you share things? Do you find that you're getting more powerful and more able to handle things in your life as you share? Well, yeah, I do. But for some reason it goes in one ear and out the other for most. Don't people. worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You just yeah, keep I, going be, because you're getting better. <laughs> Truth Raider, you're becoming a better person as you do that. So keep doing it. So eventually, eventually somebody will, it'll click with somebody. It'll catch with somebody. But in the meantime, you're becoming a better person as you're giving and as you're sharing. Yeah, you teaching, know that. You know, I, te- teaching is the best way to learn. Do you know that? Right. Teaching is the best right. way to learn. Any good, any good teacher it becomes a learner. As you're teaching, you're learning. As I do this radio program every day, I get smarter and smarter just by talking about stuff. So never, never give up. Don't worry about the results. Don't be attached to the results. You just keep sharing. Right. Broccoli right. beef. I want to make I wanted to slip that in there. Broccoli beef. <laughs> what I is sold broccoli? On broccoli beef? What is that? Broccoli. Is... Broccoli, broccoli with beef. Oh, broccoli with beets. Two power foods, truly. Beef. Truly. I love beets. Did you say peas beef. or beets? Spell. A beef. 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 I, I, I think you're saying peas or beets, but I can't tell. But they're both good. Thanks, Truth Raider. Got to go, man. Have a beautiful day. Christy Whitman coming up at the bottom of the hour. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive page at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got videos and blog posts and news stories, lots of good health information on, on all our websites, and a Join the Team link that you can click on if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. You can also call 866-735-2470 for more information. And please take a look at our Truth Skin Health products. Make ideal Christmas gifts. They're all formulated. They all have been formulated in my compounding pharmacy for healing wounds and for folks dealing with skin diseases, for preventing post-surgical scarring. We repurpose them as beauty products. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers. Just 100% Active and functional ingredients, everything your skin needs, and nothing it doesn't, truthtreatments.com. Check out our over 1,400 four- and five-star reviews at truthreviewed.com. Truthtreatments.com for our products. They're all, uh, we've got uh, Black Friday, or we've got Christmas specials. We had a Black Friday special. And also uh, truthreview.com for our four- and five-star reviews. All right, I am really excited to have our guest on. Christy Whitman is an inspirational powerhouse and uh, her TEDx talk is uh, required listening for anybody who's feeling less than unbelievably unlimited and powerful. It's, it's entitled You and Your Life are Unlimited. Her books, her new book is The Desire Factor. She also has two other books, The Art of Having It All and Taming Your Alpha Bitch. And she is majorly inspirational. Please welcome to the bright side, Christy Whitman. Hey, Christy. Thank you, Ben. What an introduction. I hope I, well, uh, you know, live you're doing night. some seriously. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get a chance to read your books, but I got on uh, on the Internet and I saw the TED talk and I'm going to be listening to this every morning. It is so unbelievably important and powerful. You and your life are unlimited. I've been saying this, uh, saying this for yeah, that's what our message is on the bright side about how much power we have and that we don't know we have. But I was really intrigued by how you juxtapose the old way of looking at things and the new way of looking at things. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about that, the old, the old way we look at the world culturally and individually versus the new way? 
Absolutely. So most of us were raised and, you know, programmed and conditioned to think that if I want to be happy or if I want to be successful or whatever we're ultimately wanting to feel, then I have to go do something, get something, attract something, accomplish something. So it's a very outside-in approach. If I want to feel successful, I have to go either make more money or buy a bigger car or, you know, better car or have a bigger house or have more, you know, accomplishments after my title of my name. And when I get that, then I'll feel. But the problem is, is that most of us have accomplished those things, do make more money, get the promotion, get the bigger house, and we're still left feeling like, okay, that wasn't it. So maybe it's more money that I need to go get, or maybe it's not that wife. Maybe I need to get a different wife, or maybe I need to have another child, or maybe I have to go get another degree. So it's always this rat race of more, 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 and we're always left feeling like, why am I not fulfilled? Why am I not satisfied? And the reason is because it's not an outside-in approach. It needs to be an inside-out approach. So if we identify what we're wanting to experience, whether it's fulfillment or a new level of comfort or success or security or freedom, we need to feel what that feels like first and have that become what we align with as an energy Because then we can take momentum, we take action steps, we declare what we do desire, and then move in that direction. But now we're already feeling what we Mm. want to feel. And isn't it true that we, we want the feeling anyway? We don't necessarily want the thing, we want the feel. That's what we're looking for. We want the feeling, and of course, the thing is nice, right? You want to drive the car, you want to live in the house, or you want to have the partner. That that also is what we're after. So it's not just one or the other; it's both and. But mm. having, you know, having the thing without the feeling leaves us feeling empty. And then there's also that. Well, I could feel happy all day long, or I could feel successful all day long. But why am I not accomplishing anything? Why am I driving this old jalopy? Or why am I living in this, you know, apartment when I want to buy a house? Or whatever it is. So because we're not just simple beings, I mean, we're physical beings, but we're also energy beings. So it's both and. And Do you, that's – go ahead. Uh, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you think it, it sounds so easy, but how, why is it that people can't just feel things first? Why is it that we have such resistance to that? Yeah, we've been conditioned to not feel. I mean, think about it. When you were a little boy and when I was a little girl, I was told, oh, that's crazy. Don't feel that way. Or Mm. my grandmother would say, don't be angry. You're acting like your father. Or don't do this. Little girls don't do that. So we get all of these rules and roles on top of ourselves. Instead of just being able to feel what we want to feel, let it process through us. Because when you really actually understand energy and our whole entire consciousness of, of what energy is and how we express energy, our emotions are really big because it has a high intensified vibration that goes out into the universe. But most of us shut down our emotions. We smoke or drink or shop or gamble Mm. or, you know, all these things to avoid, eat sugar, drink tons of coffee, all these things to avoid actually what's going on inside of ourselves to actually feel. And the thing that most people don't understand is that when you're suppressing lower level emotions, such as fear and anxiety and, um, you know, worry and frustration and sadness, you're also suppressing the higher energies of appreciation Mm. and love and gratitude. It's not one or the other. It's a full spectrum. So that's why so many people have a hard time connecting with the energy of joy and feeling that because they're not fully allowing themselves to feel all their emotions. And so if you don't, if you don't feel all your emotions, if you don't feel all your emotions, you're going to be limiting the good ones too. Yes, exactly. If anybody takes anything away from what we're talking about here, that is the biggest thing, is that just by eating too much food or drinking too much alcohol because you're avoiding negative emotions, you don't want to feel the fear and then process it because you don't Mm. know how, most people don't know how, then you're also limiting the joy that you can feel or the success or the abundance or whatever it is that you're wanting to feel, a freedom, security. Do you think negative emotions or lower level emotions, as you say, will dissipate if they're felt or will they just, if you feel them, this is what I think people are afraid of, they'll just keep feeling it if they feel it. They won't go away. Yeah, so that's the that's the misconception, and I used to have that too because I would have a therapist say, "Well, you need to feel your anger," and I'd be like, oh, "If I feel my anger, I'm going to turn into the Green Monster, the Hulk, and I'm never right. coming back." Right. And and that's what people are afraid of because they don't understand what their emotions are. Their emotions are just energy, and so yes, if you here here's a caveat to that. 
our our mind, our thoughts are very connected to our emotions. And what most people do if they start to feel their, say, anger or their fear, they then get their mind involved and the mind talks about or reminds them of why they're justified in feeling the anger. So it's Mm. like this amplification of thoughts and emotions. And what needs to happen is an isolation of just feeling the emotions and then feeling and letting the energy pulsate out. It takes 90 seconds to literally process an emotion. I love as that. Long as, yeah, as long as you don't connect the, the mind. You don't have to go, oh, you don't have yeah. to identify it. You don't have to tell a story about it. You don't have to describe wow. it. Just feel the emotion. Let it flow out. And then choose the energy of how you do want to feel. You could say, I, okay, I'm, I'm done with the anger. I now want to be back in a place of compassion or love or joy. Have you heard of Jill Bolte Taylor? Of course, yes. Oh, okay, gotcha. Right, cool. Because she talked about the 90 seconds, too. All right, so when we come back, Christy, I want to talk about superpowers. I love that idea that we have superpowers. That's such a, a cool concept. We've got Christy Whitman on the bright side. Her book's The Desire Factor and also The Art of Having It All, Taming Your Alpha and, ta- and also Taming Your Alpha Bitch. Christy Whitman, more on the bright side right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Christy Whitman. Her website is ChristyWhitman.com, and that's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y-W-H-I-T-M-A-N, ChristyWhitman.com. Her new book is The Desire Factor. Definitely want to talk about that, Christy. But before we get into that, uh, tell us about superpowers and what you mean by that. Well, each person has these powers that connect us to our divine. So beyond ourselves as our, you know, as I talked about in the TED Talk and also in my book, Quantum Success, that who we know ourselves to be, who we actually, all the life that we've lived and all of our imprints, all of our stories of triumph and perceived failure, everything is only 4% of who we really are. And the 96% is really the divine that's breathing us. It's the Mm. one that's beating our heart without us even having to do that. And so when we start to tap into our superpowers, we are then in connection, we're fusing with that broader part of us. So we're not just doing life from the 4%, we're literally living life from our 100%. And so those superpowers starts with, and most people don't even think about this, our ability to choose faith. And faith, not from a religious perspective, but faith in that there's something bigger, broader, that Mm. knows what you want, that knows how to, all the solutions to the perceived problem, all the, you know, the the outcomes to the perceived challenges. It's got everything, every need that that we have, it's already being met in a energetic place before we as a human being can even know it. And so it's, there's this place of, well, I don't see it, therefore it's not here, therefore it's not real. But when we practice the first superpower of faith, then knowing that something bigger is looking out for us and that it wants more than we even want for ourselves, we can choose faith in what we want instead of what we don't and what we're afraid of. So faith is the first superpower that we have as human beings, and we can't go get more faith. We're practicing faith all the time, either faith in what we don't Mm. want or faith in what we do want. And that's our super... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's like worry is negative prayer. Yes, exactly. So worry, fear, doubt, frustration. If, If we are constantly feeling that as a emotion, we are focused in lack which never feels good. So, you know, in Course in Miracles, it talks about there's really only two primary emotions. There's fear Mm. and there's love. Where does the fear come from? We have to dig deeper. The fear comes from a perception of lack, of disconnection, of separateness. And when we have that superpower of faith that we are connected, that it's not just me trying to pay the bills or trying to figure out the problems, that there's something that's breathing me that loves me and adores me and you, each one of us, or we wouldn't Mm. be here, Mm. and that we have the ability through our own free will and choice to choose where are we putting our focus, on what we want or what we don't want. That's awesome. You know, we talk about on the bright side, we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system versus the sympathetic nervous system. And that's kind of like the fear and love that you're talking about. The primal dichotomy is right. this idea. And we can go into, we can operate from either perspective. Is it volitional or is it, are we programmed? Well, it's both. 
I mean, it's, it's so it's it's not just one or the other. I mean, most of us were say if you have religious beliefs and that you I was raised Catholic, nothing wrong with the Catholic religion. But for me, what I interpreted now it doesn't it wasn't necessarily what I was sat down and told, but what I interpreted is that there was this God thing outside of me, and that mm. like Santa Claus, if I was bad, I was going to get you know uh, coal, and if I was good, then I was going to go to heaven. There was this promise of like in this life, you better be good because then you'll be promised heaven. Or if you're bad, you're going to be with the pitchfork guy. And, you know, so it was like this thing was outside of me judging me. And then I felt like, well, I already messed up, right? So I might as well go, I might as well be, go be a bad girl because I've already screwed mm-hmm. up. So I'm going to pitchfork place anyways. So it was this perception of, you know, this is what was ingrained in me. And, and it took me a while to realize that, wait, this God thing this this thing that almighty power creator it's everywhere within everyone it's life it's within me it's not outside sitting on a cloud sitting there with a tap, pad of paper judging me it's within you with me within crystals within plants within animals it's it's in the space between all the physical and it's in and under all the physical it's everything everywhere yeah. and when we understand that then we feel connection to something that's We're in the oneness of it instead of separate from it. And that's just what our conditioning has been, is that we're separate from this thing and that we've got to prove ourselves in order to be loved. Is that the core of all our problems, would you say, is that we feel disconnected? Yeah, sense. separateness, consciousness, lack consciousness, perceiving yeah. that we don't have enough, we're not enough, mm. we're not deserving enough, we're not worthy enough, we're not valuable enough, we don't have what it takes to do the things that we want to, like I wrote about in the desire factor. If you receive a desire for anything, it doesn't matter if you want to move to Wyoming or mm. get a fabulous you know, fashion purse or, or find the love of your life, whatever your desire is, that desire, unless it's harmful to you or somebody else, came from a higher place and as we practice faith that that came from the giver i'm the receiver i'm co-creating with this divine and that i'm worthy to have my life be full of fun and joy and i'm here to thrive and to feel good then we can take the actions that we need to take in this physical world with knowing that that desire already exists in a realm it's already the, the all the steps have already been laid out. I just need to follow those steps, and my desires will manifest. How does that fit into what you said? You said something really cool in your video. You said, uh, "Life is we're not living life; life is living us." Can you connect that up to what you just said about absolutely. desire? Yeah, absolutely. So we are all created in and in, in, in uniquely created from the divine. And our individual consciousness was created out of the divine consciousness. And so in order to have life, that life is our life partner. It's leading us. Mm. Instead of us being disconnected from it, if we open up to it, our life is literally guiding us. That life is our life partner. If we're breathing, we have that in us. We have that energy. And that is guiding us if we allow it to. But most people are shut down to it. How can we use what you're saying to deal with all the stuff that's going on in the world today in terms of viruses and sicknesses and fear and shutdowns and all the, all the sturm and drang that's going on in the world? How can we use your wisdom? The politics and the protesting. Yeah, and all, all, of that, exactly. all of that. Okay, so here's the thing. We have control, truly. We have influence, only five things in our lives, and none of them are outside of ourselves. What they are is our own consciousness, and to break that down is, number one, what we say, our words. Words have extreme power. I mean, it says in the Bible, in the beginning there was the Word. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, the words that we choose to say will create thoughts, and those thoughts create our perspective, which then creates our emotions, which then, you know, we either take action on something or we don't. But our words are the first part of it. And I created a whole series called Watch Your Words, and you would absolutely love it, Ben. It's a 30-day video series. They're like two, three-minute videos where it tells you each and every day the word or phrase that most people say, why it's harming them and pulling down their vibration and causing them to be in lack and, mm. of course, then feel bad, and what to say instead. So, for example... During the pandemic, which obviously is still going on, and and during the first lockdown, 
I heard celebrities and athletes and next door neighbors, everybody saying, oh, I miss, I miss getting a pedicure. Uh I miss playing sports. I miss going to dinner with my husband. I miss, I miss, I miss seeing my friends. Mm. And when we say I miss something, we may miss it. But when we say that and our perspective is there, we feel bad. The lack. But the lack, exactly. So instead, shifting and saying, like, I would catch myself going, oh, I miss going to dinner. And I'd say, wait, no, I am so looking forward to going to dinner. It's a <laughs> very great. different perspective. Yeah. And that even brought me into, ooh, when, things, when the restaurants open up again, where would I, of all the restaurants in Scottsdale, wow. Arizona, where would I want to go? <gasps> I want to go to, oh, my God, I want to go to Mastro's. And then it became like, ooh, what would I wear? Who would I go with? Would it be just with my husband or do I want to go with friends? Wow. You know, and then it, be, see, it becomes very creative instead of, oh, I can't go Give to us another with one. Husband. Give us another one. We only have about 30 seconds. Give us another one. I can't afford I mean, you say I can't afford or can't do anything, you shut down the creative energy. Instead, that's not a financial priority for me right now. I'd love to do it, but you're still mm. keeping the energy open. So yeah. it's our words, our thoughts, our perspectives, our emotions, and the actions are all the things that we can control. That is awesome, Christy. Thank you so, so much for your work, and thank you for being on the bright side. Please hold on the line. I want to say goodbye to you. Don't, go, don't hang up. Perfect. Thank you, Christy. ChristyWhitman.com. Her book is The Desire Factor and uh, The Art of Having It All and also Taming Your Alpha Bitch. Super, super inspirational. Please check out her TED Talk. It is absolutely stunning. You and your life are unlimited. Thanks, Christy Whitman, for being on the bright side. And that's all the time we have for today. I am Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.